So, the Liberator 12K has become a pump action uh, six shot revolver, and I have a working, um, not just mock up, but pretty good, uh, towards at least a prototype um, design where it's actually going to be most of this is done. I just got to work on the firing control group. So, here's what it looks like so far. Um, so it cycles pretty reliably. Um, I have a few issues where my cylinders aren't glued in yet, so it takes a little, they, there's a few kind of oddities about it. Um, they, the, the cylinders slide out of, out of position and they don't, um, it'll get stuck basically. Um, so that's just some final, some final fitting that I have on my side and some gluing and and fun stuff like that. Um, so you can see, as I've taken, what you can see from the old version, I've taken the spindle and I've replaced it with a quarter inch uh, shaft collar, or quarter inch rod and uh, shaft collars to act as stops. Um, I have to have a spring on here right now. I don't know if this is gonna stay. Um, I might move them up along the, the side and they compress as you, as you move out. Um, I'm not sure yet. Um, so I don't have a fire control group in here yet. Um, I haven't worked my other design, the, the unknown cat version, um, into into this yet. Um, I'm thinking I could do that and just drop it in here, like as a little, you know, I have a printed box kind of for it already. So if I slotted this and made a little drop-in section, I could probably put, just put it in there and uh, get away with that. Um, I do want to rework this though, um, so that it's uh, just a little easier to use. Um, for a little easier to, uh, has, a, has, a, has an easier trigger pull, because right now it's a little bit tough. So what I might do is print out like some, uh, some forms or, or uh, what's the term I'm looking for? A template basically. So you just print out a little, a little plastic piece to set this T into and say drill right there. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. It's, it's still, the, the firing mechanism and all that's still kind of in development. Um, but I'm going to try and at least get it tested relatively soon. So let me show you what's going on here, since there's a few things, um, a few problems I've had to work through. Um, so first of all, uh, you need, here, let me just show you the action. So it starts out here fully compressed with the gas seals on the front and the rear engaged. Um, and then as you pull out, it'll disengage one of those gas seals. So if I aim it down, It'll disengage the front gas seal first. If I aim it up, sorry, uh, one of those two. If I aim it down, it'll disengage the, yeah, there we go. If it's down, it'll disengage the back seal first. It doesn't really matter what um, order it happens in, um, but they do need to, they will both disengage. So that one comes off, and then there's a pin up in there, up inside of there, that rides in the track that actually turns the, the cylinder. So. As I keep pushing, it's going to force that, oh, sorry, the bottom one's going to separate now. And then that pan is going to start actuating that cylinder. And then when it comes out the other end, you can see there, um, it reverses. And as it goes back, it's going to turn the cylinder, uh, I don't know if it turned it all the way around, but can we do it again. It's going to go down, and then back. And it's going to rotate the cylinder all the way. And then you start re-engaging the gas seals. So, yeah, so you start, start re-engaging the gas seals. And once you're there, it's no longer gonna turn on you. Um, and you can push it shut all the way. Um, so I like this design a lot. Um, the gas seal problem I've kinda got figured out. Um, that's largely an issue of how long this, this pipe is. So you gotta have, you gotta be able to clear this pipe with the, with the cylinders, uh, the chambers. Um, and then you have a stop up here, right, which you can see there. Um, you have a stop, which is just a, uh, a shaft collar, in my case, um, to say where that, the maximum distance, basically, for the cylinder to move forward. So watch, check this out. So I'm going to pull, and it's going to pull forward. It's going to hit that um, shaft collar, which is going to force it to start turning. Okay, so 
I'm gonna go a few more times just so you can get a good good view of it here. <laughs> So that's the way it works um, down, basically. Up and down is basically the same thing. It's just a matter of which, which gas seal separates first, the front one or the back one. Um, I can do it up too, but in that, in that case, so what you're doing, when the gun is pointing down, all of the weight is, is resting um, on the front end, on the fore end up here. This, I'm calling this the fore end, this whole thing. Um, all the weight is resting on the fore end. So I'm actually just lifting up the back, right? Um, and it's not until I hit that pin that I actually grab the cylinder and lift it up. And then once it clears that bottom gas seal, right, it starts to turn. Um, <laughs> with the springs on here, it's actually kind of a heavy pull. This is like pushing forward, this, this separating action where it's your, what is that, your triceps and, and uh, whatever else. You can, you can tell, like that's not an action that you make all the time with, with a lot of force. Um, so with the spring on there, it's a little bit um, rough. A normal like you know, pull to pull to eject and forward to load um, pump action is a lot um, biomechanically right for your for your body. It's better um, or it's easier. Um, so it's all your strong muscles is curling is the curling unit. Um, anyway, so I think I've showed you all of the the major parts. Oh. So what I've done here, let me show you the T. So before it was just a clamp piece that you had, and I've kind of redone that. So you have, I'm trying to keep all of the uh, strength in in kind of the, the ideal axis for, for where I'm taking forces. So um, basically I, I skeletonized the, the, the T housing. So I now have this, this piece here that, that, that this front end is the bottom. This It prints upward that way. Um, on this side, it's the other way around. So this is the bottom, and it prints up that way towards the middle. Um, and this bottom piece here, this is actually kind of clever. I like this. Um, so this bottom piece, um, this box, right? This is just a box that fits around um, a, a smaller inside piece, a little tab, basically. Um, but the cool thing is, I put that shaft collar there, and once you tighten that shaft collar in there, it holds um, this bottom piece on. Um, this back piece here is slotted right now, so it, it pushes forward and slots onto the, the bottom piece, which has a little tab there you can probably see. It's right, sorry. It's right there, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so it has a little tab there, and right now, so I have a problem with them separating. Um, and with the angle irons sliding back and forth too much. So I could tighten up the tolerances on these, uh, but ultimately I'd want some kind of screw or something that you can just tighten up. Um, so right now it's zip tight. Um, the, the angle iron um, right now, because I have this longer, so I'm a little torn on this. Um, this longer portion here is really easy to just hit print on. Um, but because it's smaller, it takes a lot longer to print. Um, this lower piece here takes maybe two, three hours to print, um, and this the, adding this extra piece on here adds a couple hours, easy. Um, so I've played around with the idea of just having like, just, you know, I, I call it the actuator, but just you know a little block here that I print out and, and run back and forth, or um, and then connecting it with like some threaded rod. Um, but I kind of like the idea of keeping that part all plastic. This is a little bit tall right now, um, which I'm not super keen with. But uh, yeah, so let's see. The angle iron is held, held holds all this nice and, and in, in 90 degree, you know, angles to each other. It keeps it from turning. Um, this bottom part here keeps it from from rotating on the T. Um, and the, yeah, it's kind of it. I mean, just this, this spindle, I'm calling this the spindle, um, this long rod. Um, the, the spindle actually holds kind of all this together. It holds the, the bottom piece together because it's um, set screwed in there on a, on a shaft collar. So again, this it's still really strong, right? So I can still hold the, the, the barrel and it's, 
you know, holding on. Um, I can hold on to the the uh, stock, and it's still strong. Um, it'll be more weight when you have shells in here. Um, so one of the things that's not covered is the <laughs> well, the back isn't covered, so your shells can fall out. So I got to find some kind of plate or something there to put there to keep them from falling out, and like it's going to be under spring tension, and uh, that's going to be interesting. We'll see. Um, so that, what else? Um, I think those are the, the high points. Um, I might move, so the grip right now is actually attached to the bottom. I might move that to the back because I think that's going to be a stronger joint. Um, but this is working for now. So here's, you know, it's strong enough to hold it, you know, completely by itself. Uh, it'll hold the whole gun. It'll go all the way down and up and back over. And so it's it's you know strong enough to hold the gun in every in every direction, uh, which is cool. I mean, this is just a printed PLA AR-15 hand grip, um, and there's not even a bolt in there. It's just screwed directly into you know plastic for friction. Um, so that's working. Um, I kind of I kind of like that really. Um, so, problem with that to solve still, another one, is you want this under spring tension, you want it to be pushed back, but you don't want it to be so strong that you can't, I mean, you're, you have to push against that force, like, with muscles you don't normally use. Um, I don't normally use. Um, so that's, that's kind of tricky. Um, I, I gotta find some way to, I mean, ideally keep that locked back. Um, and to keep these shells covered while you're, especially while you're out, right? Because uh, you're going to pull forward and all that mass that's in there is going to want to stay there. So I gotta have something that's that's uh, a good fix for that. Um, and on the front, as far as locking, I don't know, because if I just tip it upside down, uh, it'll, it'll definitely not lock all the way in, right? Um, so I'm going to find something to keep it up there. Um, I mean, push comes to shove, you could hold on to it. I could hold on to it. Um, I don't know. So there's a few a few things that are totally um, fixable that aren't worked out yet. But uh, that's where I'm at right now. Um, so i got to work on the, the firing the firing group. Um, I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try and put that old uh, firing group that I already have in here because it's done um, and it'll probably be pretty easy just to, to get up and going so I'm gonna I'm gonna try for that we'll see we'll see how it goes um, yeah I think that's it but that's the the current progress on the pump action <laughs> six shot liberator 12k shotgun so uh, yeah that's it for now um, like, subscribe, add me comments. If you have any fixes or ideas for, you know, the problems that I have right now, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep hacking on this thing and, uh, hopefully have a better update. This is, this is a so-so update. <laughs> um, but hopefully have a better update when I get that, that, uh, firing mechanism in there and then I can actually do some test shooting with this. Um, and we'll see if this cylinder idea... Um, if this works out, because I hope so, I think it will, um, but it may not, and that would make a bunch of things move. <laughs> but I think it'll work, so, um, that's what I have for now, um, yeah, it's, it's, oh, see, and that's because my shells are, my shells aren't glued, or my chambers aren't glued in there, so they, they come forward and they get stuck. And the that shaft collar will keep the revolver, or the cylinder from moving forward, but it's not clear of the gas seal. So right now it's a really easy fix. I just um, what's happened is the is the cylinder just slid down in there. So I just push the push the pretty part down, and now we're clear. So that's that's a result of me not um, gluing them in there because I'm developing this still. So. Um, yeah, see, there's another one. I'm going to the bottom. And that's easy to fix. Just push the cylinder back. Uh, 
and push the, the print part back. Almost. So yeah, that one's hanging up. But anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any ideas. Uh, this video is getting too long. Later. <laughs>